Hey guys, it's Al from Altruistic Channel, and this is going to be the first little installment I do for the religion and spirituality through the ages. So, what I wanted to do is kind of set up what the premises were uh, surrounding this little mini series. Originally, it was going to be a uh, series dedicated uh, towards a docu series, essentially, where we would be uh, traveling throughout the country and doing different uh, interviews with varying people after like shows and uh, lectures. Uh, that was telling as to what like spirituality meant to people and like what religion as a uh, in terms of old school religion uh, meant in the lives of people. But essentially that, that kind of fell through and so I decided that I wouldn't just let the idea go that I would just kind of transfer it to the YouTube channel. And so essentially what it's become it's basically a, a review of history from the beginning of time, uh, at least recorded time. Uh, in, a, in a way that we would be able to showcase all of the wonderful things that actually bond us in spiritual matters as opposed to separate us. And essentially what it is is that by honoring uh, other people's faiths, we essentially are honoring our own. And so it creates a dialogue that's much needed, right? So as we look around like the political environment and stuff going on around us, no one can help but notice the fact that it's kind of falling <laughs> falling to hell, essentially. And so with 2020 being the year, uh, the great year of reflection, I call it, um, where the kind of entire planet is going to be thrown into a state of having to kind of look back on its own journey and kind of what it's done or not done and this uh, for the sake of uh, humanity and more importantly to the planet. And so as we do that, people are going to kind of get triggered into awakening, I think, a little bit uh a little bit faster and possibly even thrown into the what's called the uh, uh, Dark Knight Soul journey. Um, and so because of that, I thought it'd be a good thing to just open up the dialogue as to religion in general. So but first and foremost, it's good always to introduce who I am. So um, I've been doing this for about a couple of years now. And one of the things that I started off my career in was working for a call center. And one of the things that I did very uh, that I enjoyed doing a lot was uh, being the training manager. And so I wanted to kind of incorporate that into my daily um, kind of practice for work. And so what I decided to do was venture into the world of uh, guest lecturing and so forth. I wrote a couple books which are on uh, Amazon and I did okay as far as what my intention was. I'm one of those people that I don't necessarily need, nece I don't necessarily need a financial outcome to be successful. For me, it's about reaching the one or two or three people that, that they get it and that want that information and that it somehow helps their, their particular ascension process. Having said that, you know, it, I also have uh, quite a bit of articles and stuff and, and kind of notoriety on uh, LinkedIn for that. So I decided that it was just time to kind of make it more of a lecturer type of uh, environment and kind of take on more of the professor role, if you will. And so the, the style that I have is basically I define it in, in terms of this. There are owls and then there kind of are ravens. So the owl is a really, really wonderful um, spirit animal, right? It's, it's very dedicated towards its studies. It's all about um, spirituality and gaining the knowledge that, that breeds wisdom. And they kind of are very much about the path, but they're very, very, it's very much about them. And not in a selfish way, but in a very good, humane way. But when they become of service, like when they get to, like if they become enlightened, when they reach the service level, they tend to do like more of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, type of approach. And so I kind of, I'm the same exact as a raven in, in terms of that I follow the same path and I'm dedicated to my studies and all that stuff. But when I got to the top, let's say, of the mountain, I decided that I wasn't just going to do one-on-one. -on -one. I was more focused on kind of everyone that still was behind or that was still kind of getting onto the path. And my focus became much more on the group dynamic. So that's where I kind of uh, uh, lecture from, um, if you will. It's not from a position of I know better than anybody else, more, the, more so than a place of dedication towards the group making it up. I'm just more, I'm just how my brain operates. And so if this is for you, we'll know because you'll be more inclined to be part of the group dynamic. You'll, you'll enjoy more of the ridiculous, fun little tidbits um, that we're going to cover, you know, covering from all the way from uh, Catholicism and Judaism and, and Taoism and all of the wonderful isms that there are in the world. But in involving uh, more of a frivolity to it, I've decided to also include little clues and little like cute stuff that we're going to do or that I'll do um, with each particular um, little vignette. And what it'll be, it'll be like, it'll be revealing information about your journey. So the more that you invest in your journey, the more you'll get out of it, right? And that's kind of the truth of all spiritual matters. It doesn't matter who you believe in. I'm not, I'm not name driven. I'm not a title whore. I'm, I'm just very dedicated towards just the, the path itself and the journey. 
And so I'm more focused on, you know, helping people kind of in times of, of, of where they need either guidance or in times of where they just generally kind of want to get the lay of the land. And so if this is for you, it's, you're going to be more inclined to um, find the little tidbits of, of additional information that I throw at you in sort in like code or in like little clues. And what I what one would expect is that if you're dedicated to your to your particular journey, that instead of me trying to harp on something and trying to like enforce something that I believe in, I just let you have it, and then you can go and look it up on Google or whatever it is, and then own your own journey. Because at the end of the day, the spiritual journey of the 2020 is not one based in dogma or based in some sort of organized religious uh, setting. It's all about uh, basically customizing your personal truths, what you find to be true, um, and then adopting it into into your actual pathway and, and into your practice uh, for daily um, prayer, if you will. Now, the interesting part is that because I'm not a label whore, um, this is really great for those of you who are kind of being thrown into the awakening process, kind of against your will to some degree, which is said to happen to like, I think it's going to be like 27% of a large population that's going to be kind of finding themselves kind of awakened and kind of like, what the fuck is going on? And so this is really good for you because I'm not going to get too far into the dogma or the doctrine of it um, per se. I'm going to basically get to the, the heart and soul of the matter. Like when we talk about Catholicism, we'll talk about like the story and we'll talk about all of the little things that are that are relatable that you need to know if you ever want to carry a conversation with a Catholic or if you want to know more about Christianity and what the difference is between the two you'll be able to carry that conversation and so in doing that the dialogue becomes open and we all have a much better time in, in society <laughs> in that way because I hate to say it but there was a time that we all were able to carry on a regular conversation like normal people used to, like gentlemen and ladies. Um, but in place of that, everybody just gets so pissed off about, oh my, you know, my God does this. And it always reverts back to that, that system of like in college when you're like, I'm a donkey, I've got a pin for a horse. Like, it's just like, it's so, it's so cute when you're in your like teens, late teens and like your early, early, early twenties. But as adults, it's just, you're looking at these people and go, is it that small, dude? Like, is your dick that fucking small? Like, why are we still talking about women having the right to their body? Why are we still engaging the, you know, this asinine way of looking at homosexuality? Like, why are you caring about their sex life? What is the problem here? I've never once in my life spent any of my time, and this is truth, ever thinking about whatever, whatever anybody else was doing, much less what they were doing in bed. So I've always kind of just stared at people like, you do realize what this says about you. And so instead of being in a judgmental state like that, the higher you ascend and the more you go on your journey, the more you start to find things hysterical and you kind of just start to record it, like just staring at it and watching it. And you're just kind of like, I'm just going to make sure this gets on YouTube, but without being harmful, right? And so it's kind of that cadence when you first start. And so as you make your, your as you get your sea legs, if you will, it's very important to kind of align yourself with what your motivations are and what exactly is at hand. So... If this all sounds like you, then it's probably going to be a really good fit. Um, I do go a little bit slower in the sense that I'm going to be relating it to the political environment and how it affects us in society as a general conversation. But again, it'll be closer to superfluous than it would be actually in depth. Um, but it's great for somebody who just wants to be kind of advised or, or kind of get the wherewithal of like what's going to happen and, and kind of get their bearings as to what should, they should expect. And so one of the first things that we'll start with is that in general, when it comes to spirituality these days, um, and, and religion itself, we're kind of separating into two different types of mentalities. So the organized religion, which used to be in its heyday, amazing. It served a great function for society. It was a community aspect, and it was very much about the family dynamic. The priest or the bishop or whoever was at the helm of it was typically like a father figure for the society. And so it was very, very intrinsic into the way that we operated our morals and ethics and the way we lived our lives, right? But there's now a generation, basically entire millennials and beyond, that have not really seen them in their heyday. And unfortunately, as much as I love, you know, religion as a whole for what it originally was intended to do, which was provide hope and faith and guidance for people, it got perverted and it got put into a state of divisive tactics and hatred and homophobia and sexism and bigotry and all this stuff that just went the wrong way. So until they kind of realign themselves and kind of get their shit together and stop speaking on behalf of God, you know, like about hatred and stuff like until that stops, a lot of people are are, are nowadays progressively moving for more and more away. But in its absence, we still have to acknowledge the fact that there's an, a big vacuum that's left in its place. 
And so that's where the spiritual, um, spirituality and new age kind of uh, mentality comes in. So here's the thing about your journey is that because you're going to be able to go through it with me and we'll go over all of the stuff with each individual religion, you'll be able to pick and choose what speaks to you because you're not, you're no longer stuck to the idea of having to stick to like one deity. Like God doesn't, I don't think he really care or he, she, or it cares what you name it. It could be Allah, it could be whatever you want. As long as you have some sort of system of belief in something higher than yourself, right? So where you're not always self-centered and you're always uh, focused on just what your needs are. It, it, it's, it's a great tool to connect to a leadership skill set and also an ability to tap into your morals and your ethics and understand what that means for you. And, and so it just creates a more a, a worldly person. And so as we go through it, you'll get the opportunity to kind of do what you like, choose what you want out of each thing. The interesting part about it, though, is that the motivation that you go into it is exactly what you're going to get out of it. So if you're looking for just general information, um, then you're more likely more like an owl. Like you're, it's not a negative. It's just that I may be a little bit too slow for you. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to take my time and kind of engage the conversation for people who kind of want a whole picture uh uh, aspect to it like I'm not I'm not going to just get in there uh, cover material and then keep going it's going to be more like intrinsic and, and just very involved for the, the collective it's a collective endeavor so having said that if that sounds like you then, then you're more into fast movement and just getting the information and just the knowledge without any real spiritual context to it or texture then probably another person might be really great fit there are amazing people all throughout the um YouTube land and all over the internet, actually, that can guide you. I'm, uh, but I'm, I may be a little too slow for you. I would rather you be here, but I'm not going to sit here and fool you and say that that I my way is the best way. I just represent what is called a spiritual leader. I just, I literally am more of a mystic than anything else. I, I don't believe in one thing over the other, and I will never enforce my beliefs on you. Um, so whether you stay or not, that's a really good point to make, which is. I would warn, not, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I would warn against any time that you find somebody who says, believe my way, it's the only way, or believe this answer, it's the absolute, because in life there are no absolutes. The only real absolute is change. That's the only constant thing that happens. Your evolution is a change system. And so anyone who says that they, if they claim they have the answer, then they don't have the answer at all. Because the first rule of law is that we don't know shit. And that's one of the great things about being a, a person in, in this particular era. And uh, it's very important just to align yourself with people who are going to be open to whatever your questions are and uh, also who are going to be open to your belief system and what you already come to the table with, right? And so I would just warn against that. I've seen a lot of people go through this spiritual journey and, um, and find themselves in a situation where they basically just were questing for knowledge and not really caring about the spiritual aspect to it. And so they get to the end result of whatever that is, whether it be an enlightened man or a part of the collective consciousness or the awakening, whatever it is that they believe in, they get to the end of it and they feel empty. And so instead of like actually looking at it for what it is, which is a stop along a way of evolution, like, you know, basic law of all things is that we're going to keep evolving. So truth is just temporary. And so instead of thinking that, they almost get embittered and they start to kind of spout the gospel, if you will, of what they think that they know. And because it's the absolute and that was the dead, wall, the dead end that they hit, the proverbial wall, that they try to enforce that as the end result. And so what ends up happening is that they tend to be so driven by getting to the end of the line that they forget to actually enjoy the journey. And with spirituality, it's all about the journey. That's where you get your con it's where you get your uh, construct for who you're going to be and how you're going to uh, manifest yourself in the world. And so, at the end, I've, I watched people who basically then get you know enlightened and then turn around and say what enlightenment means, and they give you exactly what it, what, what their interpretation is, and it leaves you as an audience person like basically dead inside. And then the asshole turns around typically and just leaves it for a week or whatever, how long it takes to put the next episode out and leaves you in the state of like, an, un, like uncertainty. And I don't really respect that. I don't judge it. But at the same time, I don't respect it because it just puts the wrong impression on someone. What if you were the, like your first time looking into that subject? That's not really ethical. It's not really a really good place to come from. So that's why I tend to be more mystical than I am um, guru or anything like that because I just don't find that to be rewarding for me. Having said that, there are amazing gurus and amazing people throughout the, the, the world that I wholeheartedly respect. I'm just speaking for, for me.
So because of that, when you get involved into this, what I would warn is to don't do it just for the knowledge base. You can read books for that. You don't have to engage at the level that you would need for, for true enlightenment status. Like you would really need to do the research. And so that goes back to the little things and hints that I'll be giving you. Um, there'll be like little uh, clues for what next week will be about. And so I'll give you like, I'll give you this week's, which is um, in the upcoming weeks, uh, we're going to be doing uh, a topic. But the basic question that I had for you leading into it, that you would guess what it would be about, is that what does a uh, twilight walk of a swan's crossing have to do with the austere? Basic, simple stuff. The words you don't understand, that's where you look it up. And what it does is it creates you, it creates a map for you. And you start to kind of engage beyond what is actually in front of you. Because the first thing that I'm going to tell you is that when it comes to religion and, and specifically the doctrine that goes with it, the holy books and so forth, they all are connected with what I'm trying to infer in that clue. All of them reference some form of blank. And so it's up to you to invest and to, to kind of look into that so that you can start to understand that when we cover topics, like especially in the Bible, and I make reference to something outside of what we're talking about. That's a clear indication that there's something that's very important hidden in that in that particular uh, page or that particular art piece or that particular text. And so it's really important for you. Sorry, my nose. God's running near me. <laughs> um, it's one of those things that's just very important for you to take it upon yourself to do it. Because if you're trying to get enlightened or even just getting knowledge, you're going to need to go that extra step in order to get there. Because what we're covering is just basic understanding for someone who just kind of is just in the, the market of just trying to be a better person. Um, because there's going to be so many people thrown into that, that kind of concept. But if you're actually serious about actually either gaining the knowledge just for knowledge sake or gaining the spiritual um, full involvement of it, then you're going to have to kind of do the research. And so, you know, get used to studying because it's, it's, it's a kind of an arduous little task. It's not always simple. It's not just like time. It's not necessarily linear. So when you become awakened, you'll start to find things um, that are that speak to time not being linear. And what I mean by that is that let's say that one minute you are minding your own business and then suddenly the next morning you wake up and something is just not right. And you're just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And you're slightly confused, but at the same time, you know you're not crazy, but you think you might be. And then like your days kind of just spent teetering, tottering back and forth on the subject of whether your, your marbles are still in your head. And suddenly something will happen. Well, it will trigger you to realize, okay, I'm not full of shit. That's fucked up. It'll be like one minute you'll be walking down the street. And as you were going to the store, which is two blocks further, the door was yellow that you just passed. And so on the way back, suddenly your eye catches it and now it's red. And you're just like, okay, I know I'm not nuts. I, that day did not just paint that fucking door in the, in the two blocks that I was in there. Like, what, 10 minutes? And so it starts to trigger your brain into realizing that what you see is not always what's actually there. And you're going to find that to be true throughout most of your spiritual journey. It's a little bit jarring <laughs> at first, but I will say that it does get easier and it, it moves a lot more. Uh, it moves smoothly once you get into the rhythm of not kicking and screaming the entire time. So there are two types of spiritual uh, followers, if you will. The ones that voluntarily do it, they're doing a proactive service for themselves and trying to better themselves and evolve as a spiritual being. And then there are the ones who get thrown into awakening because God basically looks at your life and says, yeah, you're fucked. I'm going to throw this into you and you're going to like be thrown into a complete loop and your whole life is going to come crashing down around you because <laughs> where you are going is not a good idea. And so those two, those two mindsets are vastly different from one another. So one of the things that I will definitely say to start things off is no matter what your intention is on a spiritual journey, no matter what your motivation is, ask yourself what you are whether you voluntarily are doing this and how serious you are about it. Because though it may not affect our interaction with these little vignettes and stuff, this little, like cute little stuff, um, it's going to make a big difference as to how your journey goes. It's all about perspective. So if you're starting things off with a negative, if you're part of that latter group, which is all about, I got thrown against my will and I don't really know what I'm doing here. I've been such a good Christian and I don't know why I'm having to go through all this process. And do Basic question 101. As a Christian, as a good Christian that you just said you were, first of all, no one's thrown into this for a negative. This is a positive experience. You're basically getting a direct connection with God or Allah or whoever you believe in. So it's actually a positive. But going into it on a negative, what do you expect to get other than bullshit and problems? Because you're basically thumbing yourself, your nose up at God and you're saying, well, I've already been a good Christian. 
Well, if that was true, then you wouldn't need to go through the process because you wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing anything that would be considered non-loving and not godly, right? So the question then becomes very clear. In your process of being a good Christian, have you been an adulterer? Have you beaten your kids? Have you said one thing and been hypocritical and done another? Have you been homophobic, bigoted? Have you spread hatred? Have any one of those little check, 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 checks, suddenly you, be, you find yourself in it basically in shit because you are not being honest with yourself. And so no matter what journey you're on, um, you start to realize that it's all about taking accountability for your own actions. And so whether or not you're trying to do this for wisdom or not, if you are thrown into this kind of against your will and you're just kind of like, what the fuck is going on? You have, there's some, there's a reason why God's invested in you. And the other thing to remember is that no matter how you get here, the fact that you're being offered an opportunity in the first place to have a conversation with God, Allah, or whoever you believe in, I'm going to go with God just for the sake of, of speed. Um, then you're basically given a carte blanche to actually that you're worthy enough of of being of being given the opportunity to step up and take responsibility for your life. And so if you don't look at it in that way, then again, you're basically like not getting it. You're not getting the point. The point is that whatever you were doing in life, if it wasn't you voluntarily stepping into this, was not in alignment with what you were meant to do in the world. And more importantly, was not in alignment with the right side of God. And so when we go through all of the different religions and the different spiritual um, movements and so forth, you're going to find that the right alignment of God is usually the right alignment of friendship. And what it means is something that, again, dates and specifically uh, references the topic we'll be doing in the next little snippet, which is, uh, I can't tell you, it's a surprise. I want you to do the homework. Um, but essentially, it, it's all referencing one another. For, so, for example, the right side of, of, of anything, it comes from the Bible, actually. And, and then there's also a reference to Adam. I mean, how much do you really know about the creation of Adam? And what is that a reference to? Do you know what that... And so there's all these little things that you may have taken for granted that you understand, but you're going to understand it in a whole different context now that you're in the situation. So you have a choice. Either you are preparing for Judgment Day, which is everybody's biggest fucking fear, or you're being initiated into something sacred. How you answer that question is going to be very telling on how your journey is going to go. If you think I'm full of shit, then you're going to be spending a lot of time coming back to this video and reviewing what I'm saying, or going to somebody and just not getting it. Um, but the question then becomes, if you do understand that, that question, then are we, being, are we given access to hell? Like, are we going to hell now? Is that why we're getting judgment? Or are we being initiated into possibly a new Eden? Those are very important key specifics that you're going to need to actually deal with. And it's not like a negative experience. Again, it's your perspective. And so what I'm showing you is that the way that you answer those questions is going to be how you view your experience. So I'll give you a perfect example. Um, let's say that somebody wakes up and is awoken and they wake up one morning and they reach for the alarm clock and the alarm clock has been on the same spot for the last 20 fucking years and suddenly they hit, try to hit that snooze button and it's not there. So immediately, even though it's not a big alarming thing, no pun intended, they're going to leap up and be like, what the fuck? It's been there for 20 years and then not be really alarmed, but literally jar themselves awake. And so they look around and they find the alarm clock on their husband or wife side, right? On the opposing side. And they're like, no, well, I guess, I guess they were tired and they needed to get to work early. Blah, blah, blah. And so then they could like try to snooze and then the next thing they know, they're like, oh, I might as well get up. I can't go back to sleep. So they get up and as they're getting up, everything's fine. Everything starts to settle back into place. And then they get right towards the closet door and they see the hamper in front of the closet door. And they know they were the last person to go to bed. And the last time that your husband or wife brought the hamper up from the, from the basement was like 20 years ago as well. So you're like, well, okay, what the fuck's going on? And just then your partner walks in, male or female. And they say, hey, I thought you were going to sleep in today. You said, you know, you've been working nonstop on this really important project for work that's due today. You said you're going to sleep in, so you had to go to the meeting. And suddenly, everything that you had dreamt about and everything that you had led up to this moment catches up with you and smacks you in the forehead. And you realize, oh shit, how the fuck did I forget that I have this big important meeting today? You don't have any recollection of actually having prepared for it. So there's a disconnect from what is actually currently having and what's not. Now, if you looked at the situation again, let's say that you realize that all spiritual journeys begin with an option of a path, right? A positive experience or a negative experience. And so you're looking for a, a, a pathway. Like, let's say, let's do a door. There were two doors in the room. If you were a negative and looking from the negative aspect, would you 
Understand that the doorway that you probably should have taken and you should take to begin with is the door that your husband or wife just walked through or in a negative context. Don't you think you're going to focus on where the hamper was out of place? And ergo, there goes your experience. Because you immediately would have gone to what was out of place instead of taking the moment to realize there was another fucking doorway right there. They just walked through it. And so that subtlety is where you're going to find um, your biggest complications and, and the biggest headaches for you. Because when it's all said and done, um, it's usually best to approach spirituality kind of like peeling an onion. Instead of cutting into the onion and ending up in tears and all full of drama and bullshit, you could just easily, like... Put something in your nostrils, prepare yourself, and then slowly start to peel the onion back because that's the only way you're going to get the most out of the experience. And it also alleviates you from having to keep coming down that fucking mountain. And what do you mean I did this? And what do you mean? And all of that bullshit, the whining stuff that happens for most of us, like including me, when I started. So it's good to always find somebody who's just going to be honest with you. So when you first peel back that first layer, you're typically going to find something that goes along the lines of little white lies that most people would just kind of disregard. Well, that's great. Most people are not going through an awakening process and are not, trying, are not being forced to ascend and kind of raise their vibration. But for you, you're lucky enough that God's going, no, you really need to look at this. And so though you might kind of brush past it in a rush, you're going to have to come back to that moment again. Because what happens is that on the second layer, when you peel that second layer of the onion, you realize that it's still the same fucking subject, only now it's affected other people. And so whatever the white lie was, you're now having to look at what it did as far as it, how it began to spread. By the third layer, now you're in deeper trouble because now it's actually rooted and it's starting to bring other people's lives and other people's opinions into what you created. And so as you get further and further in, you will notice how far it went into the, uh, the complicating your life in the sense that you created a negative outcome for a set of, of people and uh, negative situations, uh, a series of events that affect other people. And so you're going to learn that the best thing to do is to watch what you say, words or spells, that whatever effort you put into the world is exactly what you get back. So if you are constantly negative and always, woe is me, I'm a victim, then you're always going to be victimized. You're never going to be able to, uh, to get beyond that because all you see is victimization. If you are somebody who's always depressed, then you're never going to be able to lift up above it. You're not seeking light. You're seeking just continual darkness and someone to kind of pat you on the back and go, it's okay. You're not going to get that on the journey from anybody because we've all had to do the same thing you did. And we all did it kicking and screaming, but we learned really quickly to not disregard what advice and more importantly, not disregard what we actually created. And so you're going to have to get into that mindset of you may run as much as you want and you may try and kick and scream and bitch and moan and God's spirit or whatever you allow or whoever you believe in. It's eventually going to smack you in the fucking head and send you right back to the beginning because you can't escape the process if you are in the awakening process if you are trying to ascend which we'll get into the next episode um then you have no choice because you have done something that violates one of the you know either you did this voluntarily which means you're a really good person and you're trying your best to be a wholesome well representative uh, of god type of person but most of us were not that way and it's not something we did purposely and it's definitely not something we did to with with malice and intent but the more you kick and scream, the more it seems like almost to some degree that you enjoy creating negative space. And so that's where the spin starts to happen is the intent that you're putting into everything. If it's constantly bitching and moaning, one, you're going to alienate anybody who wants to help you because at some point we get sick of that shit. And second of all, you have to take accountability for those little white lies and understand that that's what starts everything. It's, it's the little white lie that is what you tell yourself that leads you down the pathway to alcoholism or to adultery or to whatever. It's, it's always something small at first. And then you build upon it until you push the envelope until you finally get to a place where either there's pushback or you get away with it. And one day, God steps in, smacks you in the face and says, hey, fix it. And you sit there and you go, well, I, why do I have to fix it? And so then you start comparing yourself and doing the grass is greener thing on the other side. Well, it doesn't fucking matter what what the color of the grass is they just spent more time doing what you won't do and so it just looks back bad back on you and that's one of the big things is like don't ever try to compare yourself with someone else's journey because as soon as you make that comment outwardly what you're basically saying in truth is that their baggage is less than your baggage which just makes you look worse and on top of it then you can always say well you know i inherited my family's uh, and my ancestral uh, karmic debt 
And again, then you're throwing your entire family line under the bus and you're trying to absolve yourself from getting any your hands dirty. It doesn't work that way. So in the end, what I can basically tell you, so I can keep this under 30 minutes, is for the introduction, ask yourself what your motivations are. Um, and then if you're looking for fun and you're looking for a good experience, a joyful experience of spiritual growth, then I'm for you. If you're looking for just knowledge and quick one, two, three things, then I just suggest reading the books and just getting yourself into the habit of being disciplined, especially under Capricorn right now. Um, and then if you are in the middle and you just want to have like a real good conversation with people where you basically get a general idea of what this is all about and you kind of get a better, wider array of, of topic points and a better understanding of what you can choose and what can be true for you because it will speak to your heart, then I'm free. And that's basically where we're going to leave it. At the end of the day, spirituality these days is all about your connection with your idea of God, higher self, sur source, uh, Allah, whatever it is. It's about showing up for your own for your own life and your own journey. And as you do that, you start to want to be part of the missions, which is the mission on here on the planet Earth. The higher you ascend, the more you want to give back to humanity. And so that that reciprocation is what we all would in, would say is a successful. Um, uh, ascension. But at the end of the day, it's all going to come down to your decision. Again, is this a journey to hell or is this a journey into Eden? Or, you know, like what is it that you understand fully and how you look at it is going to be indi indicative of what your journey is going to be like. And so that's just it for the first little episode on this little uh, spiritual and uh, religion topic. I hope to see you guys next time. Uh, if you like uh, this, please like it, subscribe to it, and share it. Um, and Otherwise, you guys have a great, wonderful process, and uh, have a great day.